Hello guys and welcome to the first tutorial in a series of Scandi PWA tutorials. Today we will talk about the previous stack, new stack and by the end of the tutorial set up the environment for the local development of Scandi PWA. And we will use this environment later in upcoming tutorials so please follow and stay till the end. The jQuery the previous stack we were all very familiar with. It's an amazing API to work with a document object model. Essentially, you can manipulate multiple or single element using this syntax, and it really improves the experience. You can change the color in a single line, you can change the content or even animate the element. And this was really awesome experience at the time. So what changed? Why we are throwing this technology away and switching for React? Well, jQuery isn't that bad. It's just the time has changed. Now, with a history API introduction, and what's the history API? History API is essentially an API which allows you to manipulate the history. Previously, each page you visit made a request to a server, and now you can skip this part and uh, start to render the page on a client side, right in your browser, and you can fake the URL you're currently visiting by pushing something into the state. In example, you click a link, and something gets put, pushed into the state. And when it's pushed into the state, what happens? Well, uh, the URL changes, and then you can track this change and uh, change something on a page. We now can control the whole application and routing by using the history API. So why did this technology get away? So let's think about it. Well, we have the header, we have the footer, we have the content, and we need to change all of that. We have a jQuery library, which can allow us uh, an easy access to a specific element. It would be very messy to implement a header, footer, and the content, and each every small piece of this content as a jQuery templates, because it's uh, pure strings, which are very hard to edit. So we need something uh, with templates, something which can allow us to write templates very simply and easily. And then what will be split into components, we will be able to encapsulate the logic inside of the small, small chunk and later ship this chunk or not ship this chunk, depending on if it's renders on the page or not. Let's get into the Chrome again and see one of the examples of such libraries. React has a very neat declarative templating language, uh, JSX. We'll talk about it in a second. Additionally, it's component-based. So you can have a component and encapsulate all the logic inside. Clear. It maps all the requirements of single-page application library. Very good. We can go forward with it. Let's see what the JSX brings us. The JSX is very cool language, which is an extension of a syntax of JavaScript, which means you can still use the JS variables in it. You can use the expressions, comparisons, whatever inside of it, and it still be a valid code. So the templates, which can be written right in your JavaScript. Like here, an example, you define a constant uh, which you assign the JSX to. Uh, so you can, as I said, use variables inside of the JSX. Like here, you declare a variable name and use it in the template and immediately render the template later on. It's just like an HTML, very simple and very easy to use. So nice templating language and the components. Let's quickly go through the components. Uh, there are two of them, two types. Is the functional component, which uh, allows you to specifically return a template, process some props and return a template. Simple, uh, very small when you bundle it into your application. Let's uh, consider class components now. Well, first and foremost, it uh, implements the OOP approach, which means that you can extend uh, your component providing an additional logic. You can implement some lifecycle methods like uh, construct 
and some additional implemented in React like component did mount, did update, and others. So you can easily control what your component is currently doing. Uh, working with the state is made easier. And most importantly, it's uh, a class again. Uh, so your functions can be declared and called on demand um, and you can access them from outside. This is very useful if you're writing a theme which should be extended like Scandi PWA. We will be focusing on the class components in upcoming tutorials. But before we start doing it and start to implement something on our own, let's first bootstrap the environment. First, what we need is the VS Code. And you can open whatever folder and start uh, playing around. The first thing we need is to install three extensions. Those are the most important ones, uh, actually two of them. The third one is kind of... Uh, for your own preference. The yes lint will highlight you the errors you make in your code and scan the PWA development toolkit will allow you to uh, make changes easily. So how to install those extensions? Well, uh, most of them you can find on the marketplace, uh, but scan the PWA development toolkit will be shared to you specifically. So you can find it in the description of this video and install this specific version. You can do it by clicking here, going into the install from six, selecting the element, clicking install, then waiting for a little bit and reloading the window. Well, here you go, the extension has been installed. Very good. The next thing we will need is the node. So let's check if the node is available on our computer. We type node minus V and we see a version. At least 10 should be installed. You can uh, install it following the official guide. It's pretty easy. Now we can check for yarn. Yarn is not obligatory. It's kind of optional. So uh, let's check for it. We, I have one installed, which means I will get a little bit faster installs than those guys with NPM. But if you are on NPM, you can still go for it. It will work as a charm. So now let's type in the Scandi PW installation. Yeah, I'll write NPX and I write create scan the PWA app and I provide a name for it. In my case, this will be a tutorial one and I wait a little bit while it uh, retrieves all the packages. And once it's done, uh, I will be back for you and we will see uh, how to set it up. And voila, it looks like the project is installed. Very good. We can now go ahead and get into the folder. So let's, let's get inside, it's the tutorial one and we can run yarn start here it will start us the project compilation i will for now hide the window so we can briefly inspect the files which we have there are multiple folders inside the source folder containing the source of the application for now our theme is empty we did no uh, changes to the application it's uh, the original Scandi PWA currently running. So because we're building on top, the source folder is empty. We have built nothing on top. We can check the original sources in node module Scandi PWA, Scandi PWA. Here are the original source files. You can see this folder is full of files and there are really a lot of them. Um, so node modules contain the dependencies of our application. The public folder, is for assets, the fonts you can have, the icons you include in your menu. Internationalization folder is for the uh, locale handling. So if you have translations to multiple languages like Russian, English, Latvian, whatever, you store them here and it will generate you the specific locale file. You can provide translations like this and uh, it's pretty simple. And finally, we can uh, take a look on the package.json file, which contains two dependencies. This can the PWA. This is can the PWA of version 2.17.0 at the moment. And this can the PWA scripts, which is uh, the webpack configuration. And also we can find here the 
start command and the build command. The start command, which we ran and it's done currently running, it's the command for the local file watching and it starts your local web server and you can uh, see changes right when you do it them in browser. The build command is for production build and you can build in Magento mode as a Magento theme and you can build as a storefront. The other files which we will take a look later on, we will be looking at building as a Magento theme, could be found in uh, Composer JSON. This is a theme registration file and the Magento folder with all assets needed to define a theme. Let's quickly check what we have in browser. We can see our scan the PWA running at localhost 3000. So it works and we are pretty much ready to start other tutorials. So see you there.